Hey folks, time for another Q&A. Again, focused on Earth's disaster cycle and some of the specific evidence, some of the things that you might wanna to need to do. Of course, the magnetic poles are shifting. This is already, as we saw in yesterday's special video and in the morning news, starting to destroy the ozone in the exact ways we've been telling you that it was going to. But I wanna start off with a really interesting question. How did things like mammoths freeze so quickly in the last event? Well, the interesting thing about that is they have done studies and they have figured out that there is basically no way they could think of to actually get the mammoths to freeze so quickly to actually stop chemical digestion in their stomachs. These were not small creatures. I mean, even if you drop the temperature to a psychotically low amount just outside of the mammoth, inside of the mammoth, it's still kind of warm for a little while. And of course, we found undigested mammoths, uh, mam food that the mammoths were eating in their mouths and in their stomachs. Inundating them with frozen water, with ice, not going to do it. Dumping a ton of snow on them, not going to do it. Even, you know, having part of the atmosphere get blasted away in the cold of space coming down, it's not going to do it. What could do it, however, is a saturation of plasma in the ways that is known to cool. Now, there have been several papers on plasma cooling and, and how that can work, but you know, we tend to mostly think of plasma as something that's going to be heating. It's just, it causes things to heat up, but that's not always the case. It really depends on what kind of plasma you're talking about. Remember, electrons are plasma, protons are plasma. Um, the rate of plasma expansion in the area, uh, the rate of flow, there's so many things that determine exactly what effects that plasma is going to be having on the material that is taking that bombardment. <clears throat> and so that's really... Uh, in my opinion, since there is no other way scientifically to actually freeze a mammoth so quickly as to stop digestion in its stomach before some of that stuff could be digested. Um, and we know that in this major event that happens to the Earth, specifically the solar micronova magnetic excursion, uh, arc discharging, and basically the electromagnetic reset of the planet, the number one thing involved in that is going to be plasma and magnetic fields, but the plasma aspect, sp specifically plasma cooling, is the best explanation for how you freeze a mammoth so quickly. Um, I had some people asking, how deep should our pump be for the water well that we are drilling? 100 feet, 200 feet. Um, there's really no good answer to this because the further down you go, you still run the risk of that major induction. You know, when we get these auroral events that induce the current through the atmosphere, it induces it more through the ground. The induced current is going to be of equal power to the thing that induced it, the aurora above our heads. But the thing is, the volume that it occupies really matters. And so we've got these aurora above our heads and the induced current in the ground is actually stronger at any one point on the ground than it is up there because it's the same amount of power that's induced, but it's taking up a smaller space. That means higher density to the material in the currents. That means, you know, great, which is basically greater voltage and there's greater amperage. And the further you go down into the ground, that's just less and less volume. The circle gets smaller. Think about it, if you went all the way down to the center of the earth, the circle's very small. And so um, it's not about asking the question of how deep underground should you go. Um, it's about asking the question of what's my local magnetic conditions. Um, am I in an area that is more likely to take a stronger induction? And just FYI, the two places that'll take the strongest induction are under the magnetic equator and under the aurora. Um, basically putting somewhere around mid-latitude. Uh, I know some of you are going to take this one and run with it, but it does look like somewhere around the 30 to 33 degree uh, latitude north and south of the equator would have the least amount of magnetic induction. Um, otherwise, I mean, personally, I'm not putting anything in a Faraday cage. I am not preparing to save anything electric. I don't think there's a point. Um, Last thing I'll mention here, and then we'll let you guys go, respect your time a little bit. 
still getting tons of questions every single day and every single one of these Q&A videos, when is the event? When do you expect this to happen? Well, if you watch yesterday's videos, you know that the steps, the progress towards it has already begun and it's happening at a pretty rapid rate. I will once again mention that the main event, the Zenith, the Solar Micronova, the Magnetic Excursion, and my best guess is late 2030s to 2040s, can't specify any more than that. But again, almost every single one of the questions that you guys want answered is in that playlist listed right below the video, right down there. You see it? Or in our books, which are also listed right down there. Take the time, do the homework, the playlist is free to watch. It's going to take several hours, yes, but all these answers that you guys are looking for are there. Um, doesn't mean we're going to stop trying to review and do all these other kinds of things. We are getting a lot of new viewers all the time, but um, in general, do the homework, keep an eye on these videos, and Pay special attention to, in those playlists and books, the things we said to watch for. Because as, I mean, yesterday was basically um, the great personification of the realization of what we are looking for right there. Uh, so, not going to stop, going to keep going. Glad that you are here and becoming more aware of these things. And um, we're not going to stop either. We'll have eyes open on all of it. We'll see you again tomorrow morning. Be safe, everyone.